humor is, there's two ways to oh, go. Yeah. Humor is the, one of the key tools that make, not only survive, that make us survivors, but also make the, 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 uh, the, the girls uh, survivors. Yeah. You can do one of two things, you can cry or you can laugh, and for the most part, it takes the same amount of muscles, it takes the same amount of energy, and it's far better for the, for the girls to see you laughing because that gives them a sense of security. It gives yeah. them a sense yeah. of, oh, you absolutely. know what you're doing. You can cry later, you can cry with them, but it's, it's, at times it's important that to keep control and to, to uh, if you don't know what the next move is, at least you come across as you, and, you do and know. I think we always, oh, always, always had you. So I said, one of my fellow officers, that was Doc Saunders, had said to me, you know, Betty, what you're doing is very dangerous. And I said, no, no, no. I always go and ask God to go before me and to protect me. And he always does. So she says, but Betty, they don't listen to that anymore. I said, what would you do if a pimp put his hand on you? I said, well, I would tell him, you better remove that hand because I am a servant of the Most High God and you'll have to answer to that. I'm telling you, they don't respect that anymore. And I said, Jen, I've thought of that too. So I would ask God, for the strength of Samson and the punches light sound in the name of Jesus. And I tell you, he flashed so hard he fell off his chair. <laughs> and I don't know how the commissioner acted to that. <laughs> I, I, really, I really would, I really would. Oh, you listen, I see. I, 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 I said, that's what I have to do that, wouldn't you? And when I went out to the streets, um, my intention wasn't to cross the zoo. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get high. I was miserable. Mm -hmm. I wanted to run away from my life. Um, I went out on the streets with a car, um, with money. Uh, about three weeks into it, my car got stolen. I was involved in a hit and run. Got impounded. Um, drained of all the money that I had. I had, you know, my hair, my nails done, so in my eyes, he was flawless. Someone who could, you know, not do anything wrong. But over time, things had changed and he had made me feel as if though I was restricted to live my own life. I was not able to call family or friends. I wasn't, I had to sneak to go outside behind, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in, in the middle of a hotel and you have people watching me to make sure I stayed inside. He was the type of person that weaseled into your mind and made you think that those things were, you know, what life was about and it, it was quite scary. After a while, they just became more abusive and more out in the open and they just, things escalate, they just escalate from not good circumstances, you think in your head it's good because you have somebody caring for you and loving you and wanting you there, so you think. And then it goes to no food, getting beaten, um, being the means, no sleep, not being ready. But all the those are pretty much the same. We want somebody to love us, we want somebody to care. And I got by with a smile for a long time, um, and, you know, I, I went to a good college for a couple years, and, um, you know, I, I was just really good at going above and beyond, um, an overachiever, wanting to please everybody. Because they exactly. will return. Like we enjoy what we're doing. To return customers, exactly. Exactly, because well, that was the best thing when you had a regular. Because yeah, and you, you could don't trust have them. To wonder what's going to happen. Exactly. And you know what you know. You know what to depend on. Right. And you know. Oh, okay, I only need another fifty bucks, and I can go home. Right. Um, but still, you know, you have to be careful if you go 
and get in a car with somebody to uh, turn the date or whatever, you have to be careful because you really don't know what that type of, that person is going to do. You know, if, if you go and pick up a chick or whatever, uh, you don't know if they're going to pay you, you don't know if they're going to hurt you or whatever. But um, it's, it's, you know, it has, people are crazy. Anyway, you know, all over the world, people are crazy. And you just have to keep on praying that you're going to learn your child. I went home with him and I drug out um, what happened in the morning and handed me money and slammed me against the wall. You know, again, I had to just run out of there. And that's how it was. And, you know, I don't have to, I mean, I could go on for a long time with the uh, rapes and the carjackings and um, getting my car stolen. Um, renting my car out, overdoses. But I was, and I had on a pair of boots that I couldn't take off. She just kicked her heels off. And yeah, we used to kick her heels off. Well, right. I had boots on, and I couldn't run. And he caught me right there in the middle of Ninth Avenue in front of that deli and beat me down with that baseball bat. And people are just walking by. Well, just they, looking. They, were mean on that street. they would not stop and help me for nothing. And I, I'll never forget that. Shit. I'm trying to stop traffic so that they can let me in the car and get away from this guy. Finally, a cab guy, a cab driver, pulled over and let me in. And my wife and I dropped, jumped in and was like, take us to New Jersey. And he was like, what's going on? And I'm all bloody and hurting. And he had um, hit me really bad on my leg and on my arm. And he ended up breaking my arm. Well, I Guess what? He's like, I'll take you to New Jersey as long as we can stay. So we went to a, a hotel room as soon as we crossed through the um, Lincoln Tunnel, found the hotel room, and he actually wanted for me to have sex with him. Why can't he or she just run away and get help? The shackles that bind them are complex and include various psychological factors, including Stockholm Syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, and emotional and physical threats either to themselves or to their loved ones. In addition, many exploited persons are made to fear law enforcement or have had bad experiences with dirty cops. Losing faith in people who are supposed to be protecting you can lead to feelings of despondency and lack of trust in anyone. There are also more simple controls used by traffickers. Imagine only being allowed to eat a bag of chips or a small meal a day. Compound that with inadequate sleep, then think of how muddle-headed you'd feel. Imagine that dragging on for months or even for years. Combine the lack of proper rest and nutrition to the effects of drug and or alcohol abuse and rational thinking becomes almost impossible. So the answer to the question, why can't they just run away, is not what you would think you would do. Leave your judgments and your own personal feelings aside and remember, the last person they trusted sold them to different men every night. I don't know how they did. It amazes me because you know, they greet you with a smile. They, I'm not going to say that it's any different from here because there's drugs everywhere. There's problems everywhere. But um, it just seems like when you go to, to a McDonald's or a restaurant or whatever, even the truck stops, the people, they're, they're just so different. I mean, you know, a hundred people can offer me to get out of here, but if I'm not ready, I'm not going to go anywhere. That's going to defeat the purpose. But um, yeah, inside me wants to get out of here, wants to run into the campaign. If we have to come to that point where we are ready to leave and that we're doing it for us, we're not doing it because we feel sorry for you guys coming out day in and day out. And even though, even though at that time I thought I was ready and I was scared of what happened to me and I was thinking that my, my man that didn't care that I was out there for him, that I was getting hurt and getting there. I did return because when you're out there for so long, it kind of gets like a routine. Sure, it's what you know. Exactly, and I don't know what part of it drew me back.